Hey guys, welcome into the 14. I'm Nick Cole, and we're breaking down the week three SEC football betting action. Today, we're talking about the Alabama Crimson Tide and the Florida Gators playing in one of the most anticipated games on the slate. Uh, this game is going to be played in Ben Hill Griffin Stadium, also known as the Swamp, um, at 3.30 Eastern, and the game's going to be on CBS. Uh, the opening line for this game was Alabama minus 15. It has dropped slightly. The Tide's still favored by 14.5. And the over-under is 50, uh, open at 54 and a half, and it's moved all the way up to 59 and a half uh, as of Thursday afternoon. To bring in our betting analyst, Christopher Smith. Uh, Christopher, what are you thinking about this game? Uh, I know it's one that uh, most SEC fans are really looking forward to this week. Yeah, hey, Nick. Great to be back for another week here at the 14. And it was a fantastic SEC championship game last year between these programs, but a lot of questions entering this season, a lot of new faces, especially on offense for both the teams. So I'm interested to find out what these two teams are. Let's uh, let's get started with some news and notes for this game uh, to get everybody um, you know, primed up for the game. Uh, from a weather and injury standpoint, we've got some things to talk about. Uh, the high in Gainesville on Saturday is 85, but the thing to be watching for is some potential thunderstorms. There's a 50% chance of thunderstorms throughout the afternoon and as we know florida a thunderstorm can crop up at any time uh, at this time of year so um, low wind not not a whole lot to worry about on that standpoint so it should be a pretty reasonable uh playing surface as long as we don't have uh, some sort of a lightning delay um injuries we do have a pretty lengthy list of things to talk about the headline this week coming out of florida is their middle linebacker is gone uh ventrell miller is now out for the year he left the USF game in week two injured and turns out he's uh, torn a bicep and it seems like he's going to miss the rest of the season. That's a tough blow for the Gators defense that's been playing a little bit better this season so far. Um, Florida's back backup quarterback, Anthony Richardson, who has garnered a lot of headlines for his play in the first couple of weeks, uh, left that game as well with some hamstring tightness. Uh, I think that he may get to go this week. We, we've seen him practice a little bit, according to some reports. So that's, that's a big ad for the Gators offense if he's able to go. On the Alabama side, uh, the defensive lineman, <clears throat> LeBron Ray, hasn't played yet this season. And outfit, outside linebacker Christopher Allen is out for the year. Uh, also, outside linebacker Will Anderson is uh, possibly the best player in the SEC. He took a shot to the knee last week in a cut block. Uh, but he's trending towards playing in this game. Christopher, I think um, they're also going to get back a couple of starting cornerbacks that maybe didn't play against Mercer just to make sure they were 100% for this game. Um, in, in terms of news and notes for this, this one, uh, you know, the elephant in the room to me is about Dan Mullen and his history against Alabama. Obviously, Mullen spent a lot of time in Mississippi State before he came to Florida. And winning a game with Mississippi State against Alabama is at least Saban's Alabama is a tough task from the get-go but he's 0-10 all time uh, against Alabama and so this is a game that we're just going to try to see if he can get over that hump and he's going to have to get over it eventually if he's going to be really truly among the elite in the SEC so that's something to watch for there. Another thing to watch for is from the Alabama side you know if you watched any of the uh, outcome from the week two win against Mercer, it was an easy win against an FCS program, but in true Saban fashion, he was pretty upset with his players in, in terms of the execution and the attitude um, and the preparation for that game. But he seems to have kind of flipped on a dime here. Uh, you know, the reports coming out of Tuscaloosa this week are that he's actually feeling pretty good about the way his team's practicing. He's, he's praised them. Uh, he said he had a lot of energy, better focus, uh, and that they practice better. And so he's, he didn't say he was happy, but he said he was not disappointed. And in Saban terms, that sounds pretty happy to me. Makes me wonder if the tide is really primed for this game or if he's trying to insert a little bit of confidence in a group and a quarterback that are going on the road to play in, in their first real battle test uh, in a conference game um, with this new cast of characters like you, you alluded to earlier. Uh, and the final thing I would point out is, uh, you know, this one's a little bit of fun. You know, we like to have a little fun on the show. Steve Spurrier, who is never short on opinions, right, uh, has called his shot for this game and said he believes that the Gators will win. That was kind of a buried headline. Usually when he says something like that, it would pop up on every website that covers the SEC. 
Uh, and, it, and it did on a few, but it was it was buried because he was on a show with former Florida quarterback Shane Matthews, who was trashing Kentucky and saying Missouri had a really bad atmosphere. And people just kind of glossed over the fact that, hey, Spurrier's calling, calling for a Gators win this week. So um, interesting stuff going on. From a betting perspective, Christopher, what are you seeing from this game? Yeah, so everybody knows the big thing with Dan Mullen and Florida is offense. It always has been going back to the Spurrier days, and it continues now with Mullen. But we know that they lost Kyle Pitts, Kyle Trask, Kadarius Toney. And so the question coming into this season is, do they have the players at the skill positions on offense to torch teams like they did last season? And surprisingly, through two games, granted, they played lesser competition, but Florida is number three in the country in terms of 20 plus yard plays. And a lot of that is due to Richardson, which you alluded to. He's the redshirt freshman backup quarterback. He's six foot four, 236 pounds. I'm not sure if you saw the video clip of him. Uh, if you're a Gators fan, I'm sure you did. In, in pregame warmups last week, he did a gymnast routine where he did a, a tumble basically. And with his helmet on, he did a backflip at the end of the little tumble, gymnast tumble. And I think he was probably too far off the ground to even demonstrate with my hands here. And it looked like just easy. And he's probably one of the fastest guys on Florida's team at quarterback. So he's definitely a freak. And I understand why people are calling for him to start because he's been very exciting when he's gotten in the game. And he's rushed 11 times this season for 275 yards. And he's also averaging 17.5 yards per attempt as a passer, which is wild. But Mullen has come out and said he doesn't always do the right thing, but he does special things. So the key there is essentially uh, he's barely completing 52% of his passes. And he, he doesn't know the offense necessarily or, or where to go with the football. And as a passer, even though he's got the skills to make some Mahomes type plays, uh, pirouetting, throwing off his back shoulder, and 40 yards easy. But at the same time, he doesn't know how to go through reads and progression. So to me, it's sort of like that three point shooter that pulls up from four feet behind the line with two seconds gone in the shot clock, and the coach is going, no, 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 no. But then it goes in, and the coach is like, all right, good shot. Uh, whereas, um, you know, Emory Jones is more of the guy who's playing within the offense. He's been in the system for years now. He knows what he's doing. But the problem there is even if you make the right read, if you're slow and you're late on your throw or you're inaccurate, does it really matter that you made the right read? And he's thrown four interceptions, I believe, so far this season. So I think ultimately Florida's passing game is not going to be nearly what it was last year, no matter who's in the game. With Jones, maybe he makes the right read, but he's just okay as a passer. With Richardson, he doesn't really know where to go with the ball, and maybe he can come up with some wild play that looks good on the highlights, but can he be consistent from down to down? Both of them can run the ball pretty well, and Will Anderson is the key guy to watch for Alabama. He's definitely going to be a top 15 pick in the NFL draft in two years, assuming he's healthy, and Alabama needs him because he's the fastest guy um, on, the, on the front of that defense. So he'll be necessary to chase down Richardson and Jones all day. And if you're going to compete in this game, if you're Florida, you're going to need some explosive runs from both of your quarterbacks. And you're going to need Richardson probably to be healthy. And you're going to hope that some of the Alabama guys are a little banged up or at least not at full speed in terms of running. Now, on the other side, it's the first SEC start for, for Bryce Young, the first road start for Bryce Young. Now, he's done really well in terms of running around in the pocket when he gets pressured and keeping his eyes downfield and making plays with people all around him. But Alabama's offensive line is still finding itself this season. It's not nearly what it was last year. And, of course, you have a defensive coordinator in Todd Grantham that loves to apply pressure. He loves to get after you. He loves to confuse quarterbacks with a lot of mixed coverages. And so it'll be interesting to see, can Young handle that, or will he be just as good as he has been? And also, Florida's defense is definitely, even without Ventrell Miller, it's better than they were last season, but how much better? We'll find out a lot in this game. And Nick, I think we were both 500 last week in our bets, which is average, and 
actually with the VIG and betting, we, we probably lost some money there, but we want to get back on track this week. So let everybody know, how are you going to bet this game? Well, first of all, if 500 is the worst I do this season, I'll consider that a big win. So even though, yeah, small loss with the VIG, um, I'm hoping that that's the worst that we see of it, right? Let's get a better start to week three. I've got one that I feel really confident about and one that I feel like I should know better, but I'm going to do anyway. Uh, the one I feel confident about is taking Florida plus 14 and a half points at home. I know the instinct to say Alabama is going to blow everybody out, but if you look at how Florida plays against big, big teams, usually they're within two scores. And Alabama's got its own things to work through with a new cast of characters coming to play a road conference game in a swamp that should be pretty feisty on Saturday. Uh, so I expect them to, to sort of have to ease their – I'm not saying they're not going to win the game. I mean, I think Alabama could win outright. But if you're giving me the home team in that environment with what we've seen from Florida in the first two weeks, I, I love getting that 14 and a half. So put me on the board for that. And then the one that I should know better about but I'm going to do anyway – is I'm going to take the over 59 and a half. A lot of the things you just talked about point to this game going under, but I can't help but look back at the game that was played 10 months ago. Yeah, I know a bunch of different players. A lot of people have moved on from those two teams, but they scored 98 combined points in the SEC championship game. So if you're asking me to take, what's that? Quick math, 40, uh, no, 39 less points. I, I, I just can't. I just can't get there. You may be right, and I may be wrong here, but I, I'm going to go with the over and, and see if we can get into the 60s in this game. How about you? Yeah, so I think this line, the true number, is probably something like Alabama minus 13 or Alabama minus 13 and a half. Of course, Alabama is always going to get a premium because of the public money that always hammers them. And betters, I mean, sports books have just lost money on Alabama over the years. So, there's definitely a little bit of a premium there and 14 is and 14 and a half or, or all these numbers are key numbers, obviously. So interested to see where the line ends up closing at kickoff. If you can get a 14 and a half now, do it in my opinion on Florida, but I don't think this is like a slam dunk bet by any means, because I mentioned Florida's inconsistencies, especially in the passing game. And of course, you know, this is Bryce Young's first true road start and, his skill position players aren't nearly what they were last season. Same for Florida. So I do like the under Dan Mullen always can scheme up some good stuff, especially if he has an advantage and those running quarterbacks at Florida. And if they use some tempo and if Alabama has to bring one of the safeties up in the box, that's where maybe things get a little bit easier for Florida in the passing game. And we'll see on the other side too, if Florida really is a little bit better on defense, but I'm going to Florida plus 14 and a half, and I'm going under 59 and a half for Nick Cole. I'm Christopher Smith for the 14, and we'll talk to you next week.